Hello everyone, welcome to our episode of Showcase on Warframe. Today's item, Oberon. Now I recall someone requesting this quite some time ago. Sorry it took so long. Anyway, let's get started. So Oberon, probably one of the most common Warframes you'll see. Why? Well, you can get them from Xmas units. Even though the Xmas only have 1% chance of dropping an Oberon part, chances be you have too many. I have too many. <laughs> So Oberon's the first jack of all trades, but he is a master of none of them. Although the update has made this significantly better, it's still outshined by many other Warframes, but don't count him out of the game yet. He still has his uses. So yes, he's kind of like the everyman. If you really don't know what to take on a mission, Oberon will probably fill that role to some degree. That's generally the consensus on Oberon. And it's kind of accepts it fulfills that. Equinox uh, does a lot of these things better, yes, but she's more complicated to run, for Oberon being more simple. And not to mention easier to use. <laughs> Definitely easier to use. Alright. So in all, all senses, I think we can get up all, all, all over the part that he's the first jack of all trades, but not the best of them. But simply, the simplest one to use. Alright. Moving on from that. Going on to stats. His health. Starts at 125, shields at 100, armor at 150, energy at 150, sprint speed at 1.0, and he comes built in with two matter eyes. And his aura is also a matter eye. So, overall, starting out, you got pretty much a decent Warframe in terms of stats. No real weaknesses, not even sprint speed. And not to mention, he always built in polarities for matter eyes to so increase his overall power damage. Which, he's not really a Warfarin to deal a lot of damage, but more of an excellent healer. Which I'll explain when we get to the abilities part. Now, visually, Oberon's a bit of an oddball, but not terrible looking. First and foremost, he actually has facial features. Well-defined chin area, you know, front brow, and, you know, various headdress with uh, his horns and eye. His shoes, um, or hooves? <laughs> A bit strange, but otherwise he's alright. I would call his various overall armor like bursting skin. I have no other really description for it. It's not really undistinctive. Other Warframes have this similar approach, but this one seems to work visually anyway. Now, going on to those abilities. We have four to work with. Smite, Hold Ground, Renewal, and Reckoning. This is kind of where his Jack of All Trades come in. Where Smite's good for crowd control, same thing goes for Hollowed Ground, but it's more passive use. Renewal be being his healing ability, and Reckoning being his direct assault to damage ability. But all of them have some of a not quite the use as you think it would be. And not to mention passive, where it increases the both health, armor, and shields of an animal, plus blends to revive. But let's look at that uh, Smite. So when you hit with Smite, you can see that various little bits that could fly around the place. These bits will be random and bounce around the place and cause radiation procs. Which is very good for making enemies shoot each other when in large groups. So I wouldn't call this ability the one-all be-all for crowd control. It's simply a quick, rapid way to use crowd control. But however, you do need a direct line of sight, because you see enemies hiding behind the crate, and I cannot use it. It's simply rapid, quick, and it's over and done with without interrupting any other action. So pretty good. But next, let's look at Hollowed Ground. Hollowed Ground being the same thing as Smite, except more stationary. Kind of think of it more like a trap, if you will. It's still very effective, though. So taking the same idea, you simply approach an enemy or choked area like this, and you throw this down. You see grass grow everywhere, and it becomes a trap. Anyone who walks into it gets radiation procs. It takes constant damage. So, and that, that said, anyone, you know, get a whole group going there, and then you get enemies shooting at each other. So it works out pretty good in that area, especially in mobile defense areas or any choke points. And you give a stack of four of these back to back. It's a lot of grass. So much grass, there's a grass growing in mid-air right there. <laughs> uh, okay, moving on from this, we got, I'm going to do two abilities at once, Renewal and Reckoning. Renewal being a constant healing factor in one spot, and Reckoning, which is pretty much take a whole group area and cause immediate damage. 
to everyone around you. Alright. Here's the scenario. You're in the middle of a firefight and you get ran out of fucks to give. So your enemy is just attacking you, but you don't feel like really giving up and dying. Well, you can activate Renewal. Renewal is one place and has no timeout. It simply is a constant drain on energy. But what happens is, it increases your armor. So you can see the enemies are now have a hard time getting through me. And it's constant healing, just in that one spot. But it also drains your energy when it's active. More people in it, the more drain on the energy. Reckoning, as you just saw, everyone gets hit up by, by once in a general area. And there's a kicker. Anyone who survives has a reduction in armor. Also radiation procs. <laughs> so, with the abilities out of the way, let's go on to Oberon Prime, the direct upgrade. As I'm making this video, Oberon Prime is still available, but for the future, eventually, at some point, he will be vaulted. So, Oberon Prime is pretty much almost a direct upgrade. Acquiring him can be tedious, got to do his parts be mostly silver to gold grade. I think I forget which part was bronze, but it makes little besides the point. In terms of acquisition, he shouldn't be too hard, because he's only a moderately requested Warframe. It's not like he's an Ember, where he's super rare. <laughs> he should be moderately easy to access for the most part in the available future. Though, this is the future I'm talking about, and I cannot see the future, so I may be wrong. Now, going on to his stats, Oberon Prime has uh, 125 health, which is the same, 100 shields, which is the same, but has 225 armor, which is a good modest increase of 75. Energy is 175, which is 25 above. Sprint speed remains the same, but 1.1. However, polarities, he has the two Matterite and two Neramons, four built in right away, with the aura polar polarity still being Matterite. So you don't have to form him many times to get the probably optimal build that you want. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go on to physical. Now, he traded quite a few things in his prime version. He lost all his facial features and gained more horns, like more e exaggerated horns. <laughs> Not to mention he's carrying a lot of swag as most uh, primes do, although his is more like darting out in every direction. Skin's no longer bursting, but if I had to call this, I'd call this more of a battle suit, where oh, the plane Oberon would just have the uh, Guardian of the Forest, this one's the Warrior of the Forest. Now the frame rate seems to drop whenever I look at his feet, because damn, look at them hoof shoes. <laughs> uh, more or less, I like the appearance of the Prime better than the original. Looks fresher, neater, better. Alright, going on to my ultimate build. Now, one thing will be very apparent for my ultimate build for Oberon. I built him to heal, first and foremost. For his da overall damage, as you'll see, he's not going to be the best one to deal out damage, but his healing factor is incredibly helpful. Alright, let's go over kind of what I have. Ignoring the physique or a mod, I got 1,245 health with uh, around 472 armor. Energies 744, shields 520. So yeah, pretty good there. For duration 128, efficiency at 130, range at 145, and strength 170. Now healing is affected directly by your strength, so I have more than enough to pretty much do a large healing area. But you got to be careful not to butcher any of the stats. You kind of need all of them to kind of make them a decent build. Of course, you could just take off the Vitality and, you know, just go with Prime Vigor and get more of any of the said stats, but I think this is a good balance of survivability with healing and some crowd control. Alright, so you can see my abilities here. Smite, the initial damage is now 850, with Orb damage being, you know, 255, but that's kind of besides the point. Smite's not meant for damage. Hollow Ground can actually do pretty decently. The angle is quite wide at 240 degrees. Radius of 20, so pretty good. Duration of 25, and damage is 170, and that's per every half second to my knowledge. Status chance of 25%, so that's radiation, so that's very frequently enemies we proc with radiation. But the big one, Renewal. So the energy range is 36 meters, which is pretty damn large. Duration of, more or less, the duration is what you, you know, in there and how much it drains on your energy. But anyway, in Reckoning, 
you got generally range of good 21 meters and damage, but yeah, the armor reduction is what's big there. You gotta take an armor reduction of half. That's the big thing about Reckoning. You want that armor reduction high, especially when you're fighting the more near chunky units. Or even some infestation. But let's go over quick with a demonstration. I'll use Smite against Corrupted Butchers. Why Corrupted Butchers? I need some of them to survive after hitting a few hits. So I figured I'd choose these guys opposed to normal Greener units. So I'll take them and I'll be putting them to around uh, level 55. Uh, you know, 65 will be fine. So yes. Smite is not going to kill them. No. No, no, no. So boom and boom. Look, I already got many of them, some of them, if not many of them, already proctored radiation. Just like that. That's how Smite's done. It's excellent, it's, it's, it's amazingly effective against the infestation because they huddle together so closely. But I figured I'd show the Corrupted Butchers as a more easier visual way to see. So yeah, Smite, again, is not a one-all be-all for controlling the enemies, but it's simply quick and easy effective. But when that doesn't work, use Hollowed Ground. Hollowed Ground, though, is where a lot more damage is all shown. So enemies are falling in, are immediately proctored radiation, they are dying rapidly. And you pretty much have to do just about nothing. As you can just pretty much stand in the general area and continue fighting as enemies fight amongst themselves and die quickly doing so. So here's, you can just pair this enemy, you can see how quickly he does die at level 65. Pretty good. That's alright. Not tremendous, but pretty good. Big one though, I took enemies at level about 50 here, and I was planning to use my Reckoning, but I changed my mind. I'll be increasing in the level and different types of enemy. But let's look at my Renewal though. Now I don't like to do this and stand in front of this enemy group, but you can see I heal rather quickly. So yeah, and with my nice little uh, armor buff, the enemies have a hard time actually chopping through that. Very much so. But obviously Reckoning, it cannot kill level 50 Corrupted Butchers. It is not designed to kill. It really isn't. Alright, now I got an enemy I actually want to fight and have higher, higher armor. So I'm Grenier Unit at level 75. You see that the Kraken, a terrible pistol, cannot hope to kill these Grenier guys very effectively. One Reckoning though, and you can see that two basic headshots accompanies the same shots as round four. Some of these enemies are now weak to the Kraken. <laughs> Not to mention Radiation procs also helps a lot. So generally, you can see the idea of what Overrun is, more like a combat support in the end. However, he is flexible into his uses, and what you want out of him is entirely up to you. It could be many different things. Alright, let's move on to the pros and cons of Oberon, which I'll be covering Oberon Prime, cause... upgrade version. <laughs> on the pros, he's probably one of the easiest customizable Warframes in terms of what you want out of him. He's very simple in that nature. Also, he's pretty darn good for crowd control, although not direct damage crowd control. His healing factor is actually quite good, and you can use that healing factor even you don't even have to be in that spot. I think I forgot to mention that earlier. Alright, and he has good survivability for a Warframe compared to most. Okay, with that, and not to mention, he is somewhat easily accessible, although that can vary on RNG. But chances are, if you played a game for any amount of time, you'll get him before long. <laughs> On the cons, however, he is no damage dealer. He really isn't. And in terms of endgame probability, you really have to stretch him out a bit to be good for endgame. Kind of relies more on your weapons than Oberon's abilities themselves. Alright. With that said, let's go on to the overall score of Oberon Prime. Stats, I'm going to give a solid 8 out of 10. I like the stats of Oberon. When you look at him stats-wise, he has no inherent weakness. He's very well built in that regard. Design, I'm also going to give a 7 out of 10. For a jack of all trades, master of none is a pretty much a good staple across many games, and Oberon's a good example of this. Concept Ho, I'm going to give a 5 out of 10. Why? Because he's a little outmatched and outdated by other jack-of-all-trades and other people who do the same thing. He simply is starting slowly to be outpaced by every other Warframe out there. Endgame, I'm gonna give a 6 out of 10. He's not the worst choice, but he's not the best choice either. It really comes down on your skills and the weird weapon choice and how you use him. 
could be, and you have to use him pretty extensively in his abilities to make him even viable for endgame. Miscellaneous, I'm going to give a 5 out of 10. Mainly on the premise of everyone uses him, but not everyone's going to keep using him. Mainly on the fact of he, again, as I mentioned earlier, he's being outpaced by every other new Warframe coming out. The buff made him much more viable. Before his buff, the score would be very different. But at least with the buff he's received a few months prior, I think it was five, six months ago, he's now joined at least the group of acceptable Warframes, in my opinion. <laughs> so in total, Oberon Prime gets 31 out of 50. He's an exceptional Warframe, mainly on his customizability and ease of use. Not to mention a heck lot of radiation procs, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, for judgment, it's actually a bit difficult to tell for Oberon. You can really tell the skill of a player when they use Oberon. Because it's kind of the point of, he is as good as you make him to be. He can be very useful, or he can be absolutely useless in your hands. <laughs> depending on your skill level. I've seen many players take Oberon to raids and other places with high-level enemies and do just fine, but I've also seen a great many people take Oberon to even level 50 areas and get completely wrecked and don't know what they're doing. But that's all based on the player's skill, but I believe in Judgment, he's worth it. He's worth it because he's simple to use, and a lot of people desire that, myself included, but i still rather use the more complicated ones. But no matter. That's Showcase Potato. Thank you all for watching. Hope to see you guys next time. Take care out there.